Welcome to Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, today's video, we're going to be making a metal headboard for a king size bed frame. We're going to be using some inch and a half round tube, 95 thousandths wall thickness here. We're going to also be using some three quarter inch uh, round tube, 120 wall thickness. I've got a couple of uh, prevent 90 degrees, inch and a half uh, fittings here. And we're also going to be using a handful of these uh, uh, black T fittings as well to join the three quarter tube to the inch and a half tube. But before we get started in today's video, um, I want to conduct like a, a contest uh, giveaway, if you will. Uh, I partnered with Black Stallion and what we would like to do is hand out two sets of the 2019 BSX kit. And what that includes is uh, the brand new color from BSX. This is a hooded uh, welding jacket with the emblem on the front and the emblem on the sleeve. Also um, matching MIG gloves and TIG gloves. Now you guys might have seen me wearing these in the last couple videos. I love them. So in order to be one of the recipients of one of these kits, all you've got to do is send in a photograph of your most haggard, beat up pair of welding gloves and welding jacket that you can come up with that makes you think you might be worthy to receive one of these 2019 BSX kits. I'll select two winners and we will ship this kit out to you in your size. All right, let's get started today's video. All right, so I grabbed some metal from my rack on the outside out there, and this is uh, some inch and a half uh, 095 round tubing that I had sitting out there, and you can see this developed a little bit of rust on it. So I just grabbed a surface prep wheel right here, and uh, it made uh, no problems at all taking that coat of rust off and getting it back down to some shiny metal. You know, all the uh, abrasives you see me using in, uh, in this video here today is from our new channel sponsor, Mercer Industries. Uh, they're providing all the cutting, grinding, and finish abrasives that you see me using right here. So it was no problems getting all this stuff off and uh, got it over to the uh, to the slugger and cut everything to pieces right here, the, the pieces that I needed. You know, this uh, inch and a half uh, round tube is an 095 thickness and it's thicker than what I was planning on using, but it just happened to be what I, I had sitting around and it'll work out just fine. You see, there's all the cut pieces right there. I was getting ready to assemble it. You know, and I had a... I, I've always wanted these little these little pins since I've had the welding table and I've never really found anyone that sells these things or maybe I'm just looking in the wrong spot so I went ahead and just made a handful of these things myself turned them down on the lathe and you can see they work perfectly right here it keeps everything perfectly square all the time takes a lot of frustration out of it uh, when you're doing a lot of fabricating I just drop in these 90s in and, and uh, weld them in place. And you can see I'm not really, you know, these welds aren't the best looking, but uh, ultimately they're all going to get ground down anyway. And uh, the idea is just to get some good penetration there. So I'm not going to have these things come apart. And that's exactly what I did right here all the way around. And once I got everything, you know, welded all the way around, it was time to, uh, you know, grind everything down. I just grabbed a, a flap disc right here, and I believe this is uh, about a 40 grit uh, zirconium flap disc right here, and that's uh, just what I needed. Uh, did a good job of, of just taking the weld right down, right down to the bare metal right here. And I'm going to go through a process here of, of uh, trying to smooth everything out and making it look like uh, nothing ever happened. You can see I clamped it down to my weld table right there with a with a block that I had, a little V block that I had uh, just had sitting around, and a fixture clamp works really good on that new welding table. Just did the finishing grinding right here, and then I switched over to a uh, like a Scotch Brite, uh, you know, hook and loop uh, type of uh, pad, and did more uh, sanding and uh, you know buffing it down and smoothing things out, and uh, that worked out pretty good. Once I got that done, it was just a matter of cleaning it up with uh, a piece of maroon uh, Scotch Brite right here, and and just like that, everything looked like it was uh, naturally bent and it looked real good. All right, so it's time to start putting these uh, fixtures in, these little fittings, and I had to take the die grinder a little bit on either side. That worked out pretty good, but I did ultimately have a bit of a problem. Okay, so I ran into just a little bit of a problem here. Uh, you know, I've purchased 20 of these fittings right here, and uh, in hopes that they would uh, slip right over top of this three-quarter tubing that I'm, that I'm using, well, um, they didn't. And so I've had to uh, actually 
Uh, take a die grinder with a, a, a burr bit on here and kind of get in here and grind these things out. Everything works real good now. It wasn't really too bad, uh, at least for 18 of them. Uh, I'm down to the last two, and for some reason, these two uh, must be a different manufacturer. They look the same. Uh, everything looks the same. But these are definitely not the same. These holes are designed to be close to being 7 8 they, they were 7 8 but they didn't quite line up to the center. That are, therefore, I had to clean that up to make, the, make it slide in. These, however, are at least a 16th. They may be, be more like, I don't know, 5 8 or something. Uh, so I have a really big problem now. Uh, these things aren't even close to going in here. And I don't think I could take my burr bit and go through here all the way through and clean out a 16th or whatever. So some way, somehow, I'm going to have to either get a drill bit or get something, uh, set it up in the mill or the drill press. I don't know what. I haven't figured it out yet. Uh, and get all the way through and kind of open this thing up. So anyways, down to the last two. And now I got this problem. So uh, let me think it through and see if we can figure it out. Okay, so I'm over here at the mill and I'm thinking the solution is to chuck this somehow up in the Kurt Vice right here. Uh, switch over to my uh, uh, chuck on here, put this three-quarter drill in and, and drill through this somehow. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that's my option. And when I got over here, um, I noticed I've got a 7 8 end mill in, in the mill left over from a, job, from a project that I did a couple videos back. I don't know, the gazebo bracket video. If you guys remember, I did a little bit of machining right there. Well, this is, a, this is the end mill that was left in there, and it just so happens to be 7 8 So what I think I'm going to try to do is I'm going to chuck these things up in here and run this end mill down in through here. Now, it's not long enough to go all the way through, but maybe I can run it all the way down as far as it can, flip it around, and run it through the other side and, and maybe that's just enough to uh, make it uh, make so that uh, three-quarter inch tube slides right in that thing hopefully I can get at least get two of these things done that would that would save me uh, a, a big problem if that'll happen so let's go ahead and get this chucked up and see if I can make that work all right so I've got this thing sitting over here and uh, before I chuck it up in the vise uh, I and I'm by no means, I'm not a machinist, but uh, hey, bear with me. I think maybe this, this actually might work. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to check sitting on the flat surface uh, that, it, that it's plumb, and it is. Uh, so that is gonna, that's going to work out pretty good for So I'm just going to set this thing right down there, right on the flat part of the vise, and I'm going to crank this thing up. I'm just going to double check this right here. Yeah, that's that's perfectly plumb. All right, so I've cranked this thing down quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and try to line this up here now. All right, that looks like it's pretty close over the center of the hole. I think I'm going to go with it right there. I'm going to take it easy because I'm not really certain what's going to happen or how it's going to react. I'm going to bring it up out of here and we'll take a look at it. Yeah, it's probably hot. Yep. All right.
there it is, the last one. I was able to get it done. Right there. Now we're ready to move on with the rest of the project. All right, that was a complete pain in the butt, but I'm glad to get that over with. All right, so I got my piece of three-quarter tubing right here that's going to be running uh, across part of the uh, frame for the headboard right here that's going to be holding the horizontal pieces there. And you can see I've just got my notch master out there, and it, uh, it's no problem to cut a nice notch in the tubing. That's going to fit on either side of the inch-and-a-half tubing. That thing works out great. It's a great investment. I got the thing a couple years ago, and I've worked perfectly on every project. All right, and this is just a three-quarter tube we're going to be using for the uh, the center part of the frame itself. Once I got everything cut to uh, length, I just took it over to the Burr King, kind of deburred everything, and and now it's time for assembly. So I got ten of these fittings on the top, ten fittings on the bottom. I had a little bit of problem with a couple of these, but uh, I was able to get them cleaned up and ultimately uh, got them all pieced in there. All right, once I did that, then I was just dropping in those uh, those vertical pieces and uh, squeezing everything together and you can see it's really starting to take shape right here so I got everything all adjusted and it's time to do some welding cranked up the HTP Pro Pulse 200 and turned on a little bit of gas and started welding right here now the idea right here was to just um, at least this is my idea this is what I wanted to do I, I, I just wanted to be able to uh, tack everything on one side because I wanted the front side of this headboard to not show any kind of welds so um, you know like I said just a little oh, you know three quarter inch tack on either side of the T fitting and then on both sides of the top and bottom of the vertical pieces right there is all you needed that's going to be on the back side and when you flip it over you're not going to see any welds to the front that's the idea anyway so I'm just going around finishing that up that looked uh, that worked out pretty good I had to put a couple end caps on the inch and a half just went over the plasma cutter and cut those out and welded those on and then a couple of tabs right on the inside this is going to be actually you know mounted to the wall not to the bed frame itself and i'm just going to put a couple screws to do that i just finished the welding up on the back side and got everything kind of uh, ground down with a flap disc and smoothed out and that thing is looking pretty good you know, went over everything with a piece of uh, scotch bright at the very end to smooth everything out. And this is a really good project. It turned out really good. Got some paint on it. And it's going to serve its purpose really good. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram. I'm pretty active there. We've got a lot of behind the scenes stuff that happens before the video. Check us out on Facebook. And also check out the website, jimbosgarage.com. Thanks for watching. See you guys next week. See you next time. Jimbo's Garage.